Hi everyone, uh, this is Captain b Ray. Uh, I have this idea. You might like it. Uh, I have this idea of developing a piece of software, in particular, a video game uh, for uh, uh, various mobile platforms in a totally open style, in that the code will be open, the docs will be open, if you want to read the story and see all the spoilers, that should be open. Um, development process itself will be open uh, by me talking about uh, the various revisions in in, uh, in the repository, uh, the intentions behind them, uh, and and so you can match up what's actually happening in the repository with what the development process is about. And and I also want to augment that with these you know these video blogs. Uh, D logs, I suppose. Um, so, and I, and I also want to take open questions and open suggestions as well. Uh, because I just, I just want to make it sort of a community, uh, process. I want people to feel involved in the process of making this game. Um, so we'll start with the core technology, uh, and that's most interesting to me. Maybe not the most interesting thing to you, but we'll get on. We'll get to some more interesting things later in this video. Uh, the core technology is uh, pure functional programming with F sharp. Uh, F sharp is great. It's based. Uh, it runs on the Mono platform, which inherently makes it cross-platform for the most part. Uh, and the pure functional part is is I think going to give me something of a competitive advantage in this particular market where there's just barely any resources. So I need every, I need every advantage I can get, and I think also pure functional style. And the reason why I think it gives me advantages is because it gives me something called algebraic closure properties over my program's behavior. Um, but I won't get into that because this isn't, this isn't a technical video. Uh, this is just an overview. So the other technologies I've got going on is SDL2. Uh, SDL2 is super groovy. It's cross-platform, gives you access to the, the hardware on those different platforms. Even gives you a, a hardware accelerated uh, rendering, which is cool. 2D rendering. Um, I'm probably not going to use the OpenGL stuff uh, for this first game. I don't know. I'm going to try to keep things as simple as possible. I'm, I'm trying to to have a project that's 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 within a reasonable scope. Uh, in addition to that, I'm using Farseer physics. I don't know how much physics will be involved in this game, but I'm sure some. And it's integrated into the engine. Uh, and uh, the engine itself, the game engine, I, I threw that together um, over the past few. I don't know. Was it, Either weeks or months, I can't remember. Developing has been kind of a daze here lately, uh, or a haze. Um, anyways, the the core game engines together. It's got the sound, the graphics, the all that stuff. So I don't have to worry too much more about engine stuff, because frankly, SDL uh, took care of a great deal of it for me. And awesome, awesome big props to SDL too. It is a wonderful cross-platform technology, as far as I can see. Um, the API is a little clunky, but oh, and, and my my particular my particular API. What the reason I say it's clunky is because I'm using the uh, FTL dash CS the uh, 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 the .NET implementation or the .NET exposure of SDL it allows me to access SDL features from Mono languages. .NET languages, um, so, and that's a little clunky. That's that's where the API gets clunky. I'm sure that the C API is is really nice when you're using C, but having to go through that transition layer, especially because they had to import the OpenTK stuff, makes it hard to use the more advanced stuff like the OpenGL things. Um, but let's talk about the game, right? I mean, that, that's probably what most people want to hear about. Uh, it's a uh, well, big surprise. Uh, I'm an I'm an I'm an old school developer, so I, I thought I'd make a, a traditional style uh, role playing game. Scope down a great deal, of course. Uh, I went through estimates to try to figure out. I went through an estimate, went through a a, a 
full game breakdown of all the tasks and put day estimates on it, demand days or, or person days. Uh, and I found out in, in a conservative estimate, it'll be about 200 days worth of work. Holy God, that's a lot. Um, but I want to make this game, so what the hell? And uh, so it's a traditional role playing game. Uh, it's 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 called Chrono Blade. Um, and I call it Chrono Blade because the the gameplay and story itself has time based mechanics behind it, or at least it's going to. Obviously, I haven't implemented that much yet, so don't hold me too accountable thus thus far. Uh, it's about a guy who gets a blade. You steal the blade, and uh, from it from a from a, a relic archivist, and uh, ends up in prison for that. Um, but he he somehow gets a hold of the, the the chrono blade, which is the name of the blade that he stole, and he he's 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 going to attempt to use the special powers given to him by that blade, the powers to manipulate time, in order to resolve his situation. In, in various ways, hopefully the good ways. Uh, but you probably won't be able to get to the good ways at first because, uh, well, it'll be non-obvious. Only by knowing future parts of the story and you earlier in the story make decisions that will impact the story in your favor. And which is why it's, it's a time-based uh, game story mechanic. Uh, <clears throat> the progress so far is, like I said, I have a very basic engine. <coughs> Very basic 2D engine, and I made a little demo where there's boxes and stuff. You can push a button and boxes come down, and it's really not great, but I mean, it's a start. Um, I put together this story. It's in the story is in the repository. It's only like a few paragraphs. It just has the opening, sort of the ultimate arc of the story. Uh, and then, you know, the best ending. Uh, the document, of course, if, if you don't want to see the spoilers of the story, you would not read past the line where it, it says spoilers don't read past that line. Um, so, yeah, a role playing game, traditional role playing game, time based gameplay. Um, I think one of the innovative things about it will be its input. Uh, it's not a D-pad type of game, obviously, and we wanted to work on the iPhone, what have you. Uh, but we'll get into more of those mechanics later on. Uh, and it's available, currently the repository is available at github.com forward slash b-r-y-a-n-e-d-d-s forward slash u-b-e-r. So that's github.com forward slash Brian Eds forward slash Uber. Um, and you'll notice there's other things in there. I also wrote a programming language called AML. Uh, I'm going to use that for some of the game scripting. It's a little Lisp-like language. It's kind of groovy. I super like it. Um, but that's all kind of shoved in there with the Uber repository. Also, there's a, some documents for another game design that uh, I came up with. Uh, well, I sort of got inspired by Sophie Holden's box game and... Uh, Ask her permission to, to build a game derivative of what she built, the demo that she built. She was super cool with it. Ruby lady, by the way. Um, but that one didn't really, that project was, I guess, kind of overly scoped for the resources that it ended up having. I was planning on having more resources, but, you know, I, I mean, it's how ind independent game development is. You have to anticipate a loss of resources and just figure out how to make it work with the, the resources you do have, which is, is usually very little. So anyway, if you have any questions, please respond to this YouTube video, uh, or get me at my email address, B-R-Y-A-N-E-D-E-S, at gmail.com. I'm happy to hear any suggestions. If you're just a techie guy, you want to look over the code, take a look, tell me how much it sucks. I always like to hear that. No, seriously, I, I like to hear anything I can improve. Anything that's going to make my life easier over the next 200 days is a big is a big win for me. Um, I hope the project doesn't take 200 days. 
what it might. So, um, we'll see. Um, now I guess the last thing you want to know is my qualifications. I've, I've been programming, I guess, professionally for about six years. Worked on some small to large games. Uh, most recent, I guess, my most proud accomplishment was having been the tools engineer on the Sims 4. Um, got to learn a lot about why I would prefer to use functional programming than, than uh, what they're doing. So, sorry guys, I hope, I hope you guys don't take offense to that, but y'all know I've always been kind of a functional guy anyways. So, yeah, and yeah, I just, I have experience and I know how to throw together a project and manage the resources and actually ship stuff, so, let's see what happens. I hope, I hope people are interested. Um, I hope I can get people involved and get your feedback and all that cool stuff. I hope to, oh, one more thing, sorry this video keeps going long, but, I hope to eventually kickstart it, and primarily I'm looking for a producer to help me to, I suppose, uh, build a web presence and also uh, for them to handle the uh, the Kickstarter side of the things. As a technician, I have I am so swamped in technical implementation stuff that running a Kickstarter, which is itself kind of a part-time job, it's just it just may be too much. So. I want I want to find someone out there who's willing to sort of act as the producer role, which is uh, promote the the, the game, uh, get it, get find a way to fund it via via specifically Kickstarter, but other ways is fine as well. Um, this is going to take it's going to take some money. Uh, it takes money for the art. The art art's probably going to be the most expensive thing. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chance. For stand in art, I'm going to take the chance of using art that I'm going to rip from Secret of Mana. Um, that's not ideal, but uh, I, I don't I don't see any better way to do it. So hopefully I won't get a cease and desist, and you guys won't have to suffer my terrible, terrible programmer art. It's so bad. Um, hope, hopefully it won't even be an issue. I doubt it will even be an issue. Uh, it's just it's just placeholder art anyways, and it communicates the the artistic vision that I have anyways. Uh, so when we do actually get some funding to hire an artist, we can we can replace all that stuff with art that sort of is, uh, I wouldn't say inspired by Secret of Mana, or Mana, however you might say it, but is, is it has the same attractive, have, it has the same visual appeal. Um, which is what I really want. I want something appealing for you guys, for your eyes. So, um, that's the end of my video. I thank you for your time. Uh, I will be posting more of these, obviously, and I think you would probably like me to wrap it up. So, thanks everybody. Leave comments, send email. Take care.